Hi. Um, so I'm a, I'm very much a believer in spreading knowledge, um, and I naturally like talking about subjects I'm interested in. Um, one of those subjects is history. Um, but I'm quite interested in history that isn't necessarily well documented, that isn't well known in the public mind, but nevertheless it is important in its own right. Um, and one example of this sort of situation is where we have disasters and tragedies that are remembered perhaps in a particular community, but not by the wider community. Um, now, Britain, being an island nation, has had a very long history of maritime tragedies, as you would expect. Um, our coastlines literally got into a shipwreck. Um, I don't know what the sort of figures are, but certainly it would be in the hundreds. And over time, uh, obviously, there's been ever increasing safety procedures protocols, but sometimes, unfortunately, it takes a tragedy for that to happen. Uh, I watched the seconds from disaster recently on the Herald of Free Enterprise disaster. Uh, that was actually the same day as my sister in law was born, uh, the 6th of March 1987. There was a lot of preventable mistakes in that um, disaster. Um, and one of the things that had happened was the seaman whose responsibility it was to check the doors, uh, this was a cargo vessel, uh, was asleep. Um, and unfortunately, that meant he missed the doors. Also, at the time, uh, in the late 80s, the captain couldn't physically see the, the doors. This was a, a cargo ferry, so it carried um, cars from Kent to France, or Belgium in this case. Um, Nowadays, the captain apparently has a, a, a CCTV connection that he can physically see that before uh, the ship launches. But I think in that incident, there was a whole breakdown of, um, for example, coordination on deck, uh, people saying it wasn't their job and so on. Um, on a human level, I actually feel sorry for the guy that slept because for the rest of his life, he would have had the weight of 193 deaths on his conscience. And, you know, he was certainly guilty of negligence. It was a terrible thing, but um, he didn't go to bed thinking, I'm going to kill 193 people. Uh, sadly, he died a few years ago. He was only 58. And, um, you know, it really, really dogged him and his family. Although after, after the fact, he did uh, try desperately to save as many people as possible despite injuring his arm badly. But, you know, things like that, it always haunts the people directly involved. And that can echo for years, and I think it's even more so in a small community. So, um, I came across a disaster recently, which I must admit I wasn't that familiar with, um, and it's particularly tragic because it was technically in peacetime, but it involved the Royal Navy, the Admiralty, and uh, the disaster. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, is um, known as the Galair disaster. Uh, so the Ilair, the HMY, that's His Majesty's yacht, uh, Ilair was basically an admiralty yacht. It was a tour returning soldiers and sailors uh, to the Isle of Lewis just after World War I. And this sank in Holm, which is near the, the town of Stornoway in the Outer Hebrides. Um, horrendous weather. This was actually the early hours of New Year's Day. 1919, so the 1st of January 1919, um, 201 sailors perished in this incident. Um, the Wikipedia article says soldiers, I think, I think they were all sailors, um, but significant because it's actually Britain's deadliest maritime, peacetime, peacetime maritime incident since the Titanic. Um, on that Seconds from Disaster documentary about the Herald of Free Enterprise, it's stated as the worst. Uh, if we're going by numbers of deaths, actually, this was slightly worse because it had 201 deaths. The Herald of Free Enterprise was 193 perished, uh, which, of course, is every death is a tragedy. Um, another famous one was the Princess Victoria disaster in 1953. That was particularly sad. It was during the Great Storm because they were still using, apparently, um, the sort of wireless that had been used in the Edwardian era 
at the time of the Olympic Parks liner, so it hadn't really been updated by the early 50s. I mean, that's incredible when you think about it, the 50s, when rockets were going into space, that ocean vessels, sea vessels, were still using essentially 19th century, early 20th century technology. But I find this particular uh, tragedy poignant because, you know, they, these men were not wartime fatalities. They weren't killed in the battle. They weren't killed from a mine. It was just after the war. We're talking two months, less than two months. Uh, so technically it's a peacetime disaster, but they were returning home to their families, uh, present, washed up on, on the beach at Stornoway. Um, so it's particularly sad. There's a local artist there, and I just came across this video just now. In 2018-2019, uh, leading up to the centenary, uh, she was commissioned to do a series of paintings. And I'm going to put a link to the video because she really deserves attention for this. Uh, her work is superb, really, really great portraitures. Um, what happened was relatives sent in portraits, pictures, photographs of their loved ones. I mean, bear in mind, this is just beyond living memory, but it's not ancient history. It's, you know, it's people's great grandfathers we're talking about. So um, check out that video. It's very poignant. Um, chances are a disaster like this is never going to be known to the wider public, but it's important to remember the sacrifice of the sea and just how costly it can be. Certainly in wartime, um, with naval and merchant navy losses, um, but peacetime as well. Um, and yeah, just check it out. There's two videos. There's one. Which is this lady? She commissioned. Um, she was commissioned to do paintings. I mean. She's great. She's, she's definitely, I would call her a professional painter. They are really good works of art. Um, you know, really personalised. What she done is she took a hundred pictures and that felt fitting for the 100th anniversary. Although there was 201 uh, men perished. But check it out. Uh, there's also a video with, uh, I assume, a local historian. She is showing, showing it's around the area, which is a very calm day. But at the time this happened, it was torrential weather. Uh, really bad weather so you know the sea can be cruel the sea can be unforgiving um, and untamed but this country I think has a particular connection to the sea you know if you're British um, even if you live inland the sea is something that is so so important in our island history not only is the world's uh, oldest military force of any kind which is the Royal Navy uh, the senior force of our British Armed Forces, but also our seafaring history. I mean, it was it was the sea that built the British Empire. So it is so critical in our history. And um, yeah, check out the videos. And um, without wanting to sound overly sentimental, I've actually lit, lit a little candle just as a little vigil for those men who were lost in that tragedy. Thanks for watching.